All right. Hello, everybody. This is Piteo from the uh, Italian translation team. And uh, in uh, this video, I wanted to show you um, the uh, way that has been adopted by the Italian team to translate army books using a free software for computer assisted translation, which is called Omega T, and a uh, free software which is used for typesetting, which is called LaTeX. Now, I'm uh, by no means uh, an expert uh, in this. To, uh, software, the reference people for this two are respectively uh, F. Wening for Omega T and Eru for uh, LaTeX. I just want to give you an overview of how it is that we do it in the uh, Italian translation team because we think it's a it's a it's a decent way of of doing things and uh, maybe we can get feedback from you and improve on that. So this video has two parts. It's going to stay relatively short and I'm going to put subtitles uh, in case, you know, my English is not that clear. That, that is a possibility. Now, part one is about theory. So an overview of the entire procedure, uh, the architecture of, of what we're doing, the, let's say the strategy behind the whole operation. Um, so our starting point is the forum, the Ninth Age Forum. From the Ninth Age Forum, we uh, get the uh, PDFs with the, uh, with the army books and we get the uh, source file produced by the, uh, by the Slim layout team. Okay? We get these this two, uh, this two um, starting points and then we have to further process them. For example, for the uh, uh, army book that we get for one specific faction, we create a table with two columns. In one column, you have the name of the English uh, rule, for example, Warrior of the Dark Gods. And in the next column, you have the Italian translation, for example, uh, Guerrieri degli Dei Oscuri, and so on and so forth. And we created a, a glossary like this, which has more than 2,000 lines. We created this uh, in the last couple of months, and now we are ready to use it in our procedure. This is the first thing that you have to extract from the forum. The second thing is to take the um, uh, files that need to be translated, which are in the uh, LaTeX uh, package that's published on the forum. And then you take these two things, the, the, the LaTeX files and the glossary, and you use them as input, input is green, into the computer-assisted translation software, which is Omega T. You work your magic in Omega T, and then you get as output, which is red, you get a translated tech file, which looks a lot like the previous one, which is keeping all of the commentaries and all of the uh, uh, special commands and all of the information about rewarded rules and removed rules and so on and so forth, all the uh, typesetting. And then this can be used as input to typesetting in LaTeX, which then generates as output the translated book, which you can upload back onto the website and you know give back to the uh, community. Okay, so this is this is all I had to say from the uh, you know overview, architecture, strategy point of view for the entire operation. Now what we're going to do next is focus a bit on the uh, practice side. So giving uh, three examples of how things are done concretely, looking so at the implementation of the procedure. If you want, it's the, the tactics behind the specific mission of translating one book, all right? So the first thing that I want you to look at is this creation of a glossary that we can put into Omega T to make translation uh, quicker, okay? Now, in order to do this, I'm going to show you what I have in my um, Omega T folder. I am assuming that you download Omega T and then you install it and then you create your first project and then you're ready to go. I, I will not have the time to go into the de this, those details in, in this video here. Now, um, what I was talking about is the glossary. Okay, give me a sec. Now, the glossary is a text file, it's a very simple text file 
which has the um, um, original column, uh, the um, the original text in English in the um, in the left column, then a tab delimiter, and then the uh, translation in your language in the next column. And you know you have this for all the individual army books and for the rule book. It's a lot of stuff that you should do. It's like some 2,000 lines. I guess this is even an older version. We have more than those um, for the Italian team. If you want, uh, we could share the uh, uh, English column so that you don't have to retrieve what needs to be done. But probably you worked on that already. Well, end of the parenthesis. Let's go back to the, uh, to the main topic. So this is the glossary that you will have to produce. Okay. Now let's go to the uh, um, second aspect that I wanted to discuss with you, which is uh, how to handle the uh, LaTeX uh, source files that you get from the central layout team. Now when you download the uh, LaTeX sources, you get folders inside of that, like this one here. Maybe you will get fewer folders because I have some old, um, some old files in here too. But imagine that we want to um, we want to uh, translate the Sylvan Elves uh, army book. Um, we should go into this language specific folder and open this English um, this English folder in here, and then take one of these files. Uh, here, like for example, this model rules. If we open this, and if we have a tech editor to open the file, let me uh, maybe use a larger font. All right. So you see here that this is a quite simple text file. Uh, it has some comments which are automatically coded in red. It has some commands which are automatically coded in blue. And it has some uh, parentheses system and some kind of indentation system. But in the end, it's a text file in English with some specific keys, all right? Now, our job is to translate the inside of these keys, or the text, but not the key, okay? Let's translate this, without creating other changes. So what you need to do here is to make a copy of this language-specific English folder in, in here, and then you rename this folder with the initials of your language. You do this for the language specific in the Sylvan Elves, and you also do this with the language specific files in the general uh, folder. Okay. And we do that. Cool. Very good. Now, uh, what you need to do to translate these files, you, you're going to see uh, in this, look at that, in this language-specific common files, you have these 13 items that you have to translate. Once, and this is going to be applicable for all future army books. This takes maybe, I don't know, two days, three days, something like that. Then, if you go to the Sylvan Elves uh, language-specific files, you see it's just, it's just seven of them that you need to translate. Some of them are really small as well. So it, it's really it's really easy and with this procedure things go really fast. Now let's imagine that I want to uh, translate, uh, I don't know, what do I want to translate? This file here? Others? Yeah, let's translate this one. I'm gonna copy this file and I am going to paste it in the source folder in my Omega T general folder. Okay? So now Omega T knows that I want to translate this file. I uh, am then ready to go on and do the translation within Omega T. Okay? But you know, this is the next point. This was just to show you how you um, take the tech files and you make them ready to be used with Omega T. Okay? So we have taken care of the glossary, we have taken care of the source file, and now we look at how to use Omega T to produce a file that can be um, 
used for uh, typesetting in LaTeX. So let's go back to our Omega T uh, folder and let's see how Omega T works. So I have the glossary file in the glossary folder. I have the tech file that I took from the tech sources in the source folder. So I run Omega T and uh, this window pops up which tells me what is the name of the file you see it here at the top um, which is in the uh, source folder which I'm going to translate next so I'm gonna click on close here and here we go with the uh, Omega T um, interface you have the text to be translated to the left you have the material which is already in your glossary here in the uh, bottom right and you have in the top right panel some fuzzy matches which will become richer and richer the more you translate because it creates a memory for translation there. Now this part here to the left it's a bit ugly uh, it's it's full of like you know this gray U codes there and this parenthesis there it's a bit it's a bit annoying to read but you know uh, truth is we're talking about something that looks a lot like the um, tech file here, right? Let me go back here and put the two next to each other, make this one a bit larger, perhaps. All right, so this is the original text and this is the way it looks inside of uh, Omega T. And what is interesting is that uh, all of the commented stuff, it's ignored and all of the commands from within um, a tech are ignored and you know it's kind of simplified you can only concentrate on the stuff that you are uh, interested in and what is interesting here for example is that when you want to uh, translate a segment you select it and for example you see here in green the original line and below the line which will contain your translation now this missed walker here is suggested in the bottom right panel as uh, translated already in the glossary as Caminatore di Bruma. All I do is control space and I get the option to enter Caminatore di Bruma. Done. End the story. Okay? This is very easy. Sometimes, you know, the article Il Bersaglio is automatically suggested, Gains is Ottiene. Uh, now, kind of complicated to read maybe in this display if you want you can keep the tech file next to it il bersaglio ottiene and then we understand that we're talking about um i guess um, the special save and so you see here that this segment is okay then we can jump to the next segment we can also use control u against is contro here ranged has been translated as a distanza but in truth this is ranged attacks which is attacchi a distanza so control space attacchi a distanza typing less and less control u we jump to the next oh sorry i forgot but this part here okay so this can be translated with more text input immediatamente dopo aver lanciato questo ah incantesimo has been recognized con successo il bersaglio può effettuare un movimento magico we have this already suggested there di 6 pollici here I have to pay attention that Movimento Magico has to come before, has to appear before the six inches because in Italian the uh, relative order within constituents uh, is different. So it's Movimento Magico di say it's not six inches magical movement. All right, next segment. This is only a parenthesis, that's cool. And this one here is Unseen Arrows, Control Space, Enter, and UA for the initials are going to become FC, which are also my initials. Huh? That's cool. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's it. That's all. You only have to pay attention to very minor things, like for example the fact that we have introduced the space here before this one, and um, 
space in here between these two. But especially that this is Mist Walker and then new command Mist Walker Def. So every now and then there is something that's changed. Oh, sorry. Select this one here. This is this has to stay def. The thing is that in my glossary I have a diff for defense um, skill. And so it has been automatically translated. You have to pay attention to small things like, like this one here. We can go into the details in the forum discussion or in the video discussion. I don't want to make this video longer than it already is. Now, once you have translated this um, once you have translated this uh, file, you can um, click on project and you can uh, click on create translated documents. Okay? Looks like it hasn't done a thing, but in truth, if you go to the Omega T uh, folder and you go in target, you see that we have created a new file here this dictionary others. I copy this file and I go back to the um, Italian language specific subfolder. I remove the old file, the one that I used as a source. I paste this other one in and I'm good to go. Well, I'm kind of good to go because as I said, uh, Omega T every now and then can introduce um, differences in the formatting. So it's always good if you reopen the file, you also open the uh, English file there, which is dictionary others. You use the same larger font for both. You place them next to each other and you make sure that the translated file looks just like the uh, um, original one. You see, for example, here we have this line there, and uh, what else? This dude there. This is the one that had disappeared. All right, this space is not necessary, but you know, that we made it this way because it's it, it's cleaner to read. So you know, we should probably uh, use the same thinking behind that. All right. Once you have uh, done that, you save the file. You close the file. And you are almost ready for the uh, very last step, which is the step of compiling the file. Now, uh, as you see, I don't really want to go into the uh, compiling. I'm just going to show you very, very quickly how that's done, because that's hopefully we're going to have a central team uh, person who can help with the compiling if we can provide clean LaTeX files to them. So it lessens the need of uh, LaTeX capable people within each translation team. This is a matter of general organization for the human resources, but yeah, anyway. This is just to show you how the compilation works. The idea is that you make a copy of the uh, Silvanel of the army book file that you uh, are working with, with in the same folder. You rename it to your language, you open it, and uh, you make sure that the first line is including the name of the language that you are translating it to. And then you click the uh, typesetting button. And you're going to get some bugs. This is normal, especially if you haven't translated all the documents. For example, here, there is a se sequence character uh, for ordinal numbers in English that's not used in Italian, so it, it bugs here, but it's okay. You just like, you know, go through, you iron the bugs out, and uh, what you get at the end of the uh, typesetting process is a beautiful, amazing looking, splendid, glorious PDF file which has the changes that you've made in the tech files. For example, Camminatore di Bruma for the hereditary spell instead of the English name, the Italian translation of the text of the rule, exactly the, the things that we have typed in there. 
Now, as you see, hereditary spell, effects, duration, type, range, this is not translated because this is in another file that we haven't uh, copy pasted into the uh, source, um, into the source um, folder in, the, uh, in our Omega T project. But you know, you just need to do that. And uh, the result is that you get your uh, PDF file with your translation already in there. You translate the five or six language specific file for civil elves and you're done. If you're wondering how long this takes, in my experience, which was only based on non-standardized files for only one or two books, is that you can do a book in, in four or five hours with this process here. If you have a glossary and if you use Omega T and you know if you know a bit about LaTeX or if somebody from the central team is giving you LaTeX, then well in that case, you know, maybe two or three hours for a translation of a whole book. So this is why we are um, very happy to uh, have put together this method in the uh, Italian team for translating army books and uh, we look forward to uh, hear your comments and uh, you know let us know if you like the way this works and um, of course there are going to be improvements so let us know how we can improve on that and uh, yeah let's keep in touch and uh, translate some more bye guys ciao